My name is Pastor Sam Velez. I'm the executive pastor here at Iglesia Cristiana Misericordia. God has a specific word for you. Open up your heart and get ready to receive. And the title of the message is this. It's called Hidden Options. Hidden Options. We live in a world that is either A or B, fight or flight, Republican or Democrat. We live in a world where there's either or, but the reality is that when it comes to God, it's both and. Because the Bible says that God is the lion and the lamb. God is just and he also extends grace. And when it comes to God, we have to understand that A or B options are not the only options. That God always gives us options. The reality is that we have to look for it. We have to open our eyes to it. We have to be creative about it. A hidden option is us being creative about the solution of whatever we are facing, of whatever we are going through. They're, they are hidden options. Some of you are going to remember this story, but some of you might not know this illustration. The story of a man that was drowning. And when the man was drowning, there was a boat there, and, and the people on the boat were trying to give him a lifesaver or something to help him come to the boat. But he said, no, no, God, God's going to save me. So he stays in the water. A helicopter comes, and they're trying to get him to get on the helicopter, and he says, no, 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 God will save me. So the man dies, and when he gets to heaven, he, he tells God, God, why didn't you save me? And God's like, I tried to. I gave you options. You had the help. You were praying. You knew that you needed God to help you, and I sent the help, but you ignored it. And it's funny because it's a funny story, but the reality is that many times God gives us options that we're not seeing or we are just not paying attention to. Many times God is opening doors. Many times God is giving us choices and you're not going to lose with either choice, but we stress ourselves out. We get, we get anxiety. We get fearful because we're afraid that what if we make the wrong decision? God, what, what if I do this and it, it turns out bad? And we start arguing within ourselves and we start dealing with all of these things. And before we know it, we drown. Because we failed to look at the options that God has for us. God is constantly giving us options. He's constantly giving us wisdom and creative ways to respond how we need to respond to whatever we are facing, whatever we're going through, whatever decision we have to make. So if you have your Bibles, I want to use this passage. It's a famous passage, but if you don't know it, I'll help you. It's in uh, Judges chapter 7. We're going to be in verses 1 through 22, but I'm going to stop at 15 for a moment just to give, it's a long passage, so I want to give context to it, but it's Judges chapter 7, and it says this, it says, early in the morning, Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remain. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give, give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. 
During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, get up. Go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura, and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura and his servant went down to the outposts of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the eastern peoples had settled in the valley thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted in the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend of his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and his interpretation, he bowed down and worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up, the Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. I'm going to stop there for a moment. So if you're not familiar with the story, this man named Gideon, God is calling this man. And this man is the weakest in his clan. And his clan or his tribe are the weakest in all Israel. Yet God calls him to lead them. And so this is, the, this is the other part of the story. There's a lot of things that happen to Gideon, but we are in a part where Gideon now is getting ready. He's getting assembled. And, and God begins to mess with Gideon, if you want to look at it that way. Because if we think about it, if we're going to go to war, the more you have, the merrier. The more chances you have to win. But God begins to cut things down. He begins to cut out men. And more and more to the point where he is at 300. It's, he was part of the original 300, not the one in Hollywood. All right. He is part of the original 300. All right. And, and they are in this moment without any other way but trusting God. See, the hidden option was the 300. The hidden option wasn't the thousands of men. The hidden option wasn't him getting with somebody else. The hidden option was actually God taking away from him so that God could be glorified. There was the hidden option. It wasn't more, it was actually less. Ever heard the term, you can do more with less? Or less is more? This is the perfect example that less is more. And so I want to talk about hidden options this morning. If you're taking notes, hidden options require God's perspective. Hidden options require God's perspective. See, our perspective is not the same as God's. And in fact, here's the thing. Impossible situations will always seem impossible until you have God's perspective. All the situations you've ever looked at in your life will always look the same until you have God's perspective. They will always be negative. They will always feel short. They will always fall short. I'm sorry. They will always seem less than until you have God's perspective. And so how do we get God's perspective? We get God's perspective by asking him. By asking him. We have to ask God. And how do we ask God? We ask him by learning his word. And through his word, we have prayer. And through prayer, we get revelation. We ask God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us, but he also guides us and counsels us. We ask God by getting wise counsel. By getting wise counsel. People that have been there, done that. People that have a right relation with Jesus that can guide you. Because there are times in your life where I'm pretty sure you don't know what to do. And you need to call somebody. You need to shoot a text. You need to do, you need, in fact, the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 11, 14. It says, without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. Without wise leadership. Wise leadership, I'm sorry. So that means is that we have to be people. If we want to get God, we got to surround ourselves with the right people. If you're going to somebody that has never experienced what you're going through, it is pointless to go to them. It's not bad. 
Like, you want to let out your emotions and all that, that's fine. But if you want guidance and wisdom, you need someone that's been there. More than anything, church, what we lack sometimes is godly wisdom. We look for wisdom in all the wrong places sometimes. We look to, for wisdom in people that have no relation with God. They don't care. They don't want to. Their option whenever things are going wrong is to go find a bottle, to go find a bar, to go find a drug. Their options, that is their options all the time because they don't know how else to handle what they're dealing with. And you need somebody that's above that. I'm not trying to demean, if you, if you know somebody or you're struggling with that, I don't mean to demean you at all. In fact, I, w- I want to help you get out of that because God is always going to be greater than any other option that you have. But the reality is, is that we need godly people to help us align with what God wants, what, he, what God deals, what God wants to do. And so we need godly wisdom. We need wise advisor, someone that not only has God in their life, but someone that's going to be honest with you. It's going to shoot you straight as much as it hurts you. But because they love you, they'll tell you. And I know that sometimes we want to avoid those kind of people because we don't like the answer we're going to get, but sometimes that is the answer we need. That is the answer we actually, we really, really need. So we, if we're going to have God's person, we got to ask him we have to come in a time of prayer. We got to come in his word. We got to, to find counsel. Remember I talked about the options of the man that was drowning? God sends people into your life for a reason so that you don't drown. Pastors, leaders, small group colleagues, so that you don't drown. And if you do drown, that was because you decided to drown. We also have to do this. We have to be willing. If we want God, we have to be willing to see what he shows us. We have to be willing to see what he shows us. The sign for Gideon was the 300 men. As bizarre as that was, the sign for Gideon was he needed 300 men. That was what God's sign was to him. See, we have to see what God sees. So the reality is, is that What God shows us doesn't always look like the option we want. And that's okay because that's the option we need. Sometimes what God shows us is less than what we wanted. Sometimes what God shows us is more than what we wanted. Sometimes what God shows us is a little bit more difficult than we wanted. But he's often showing us the right option. 300 men, come on, wasn't the greatest option. Gideon would have never, that would have never been his option. But yet God shows him that is exactly what you need so that you can win in this war. That's exactly what you need. And maybe, just maybe, God is cutting things from your life and you're getting angry and anxious. And God, why, why are these people not talking to me? Why are these people leaving my life? God, why is this changing? God, why is this going in this direction? And when I wanted to go this direction, it's because God has, is cutting things out so that you can trust him and understand that what he wants for you is the best thing for you, regardless of your feelings regardless of what you think it's what's best for you and when we learn what's best for us we get to experience the blessing of our decision whatever that looks like your young person here or not trying to date someone god will give you the best option and one day you'll get married doesn't mean you're going to live with them and then get married. No, no, no. God doesn't bless that. No, no. He's going to, when, you, when it's the right time, you're going to get married and you'll, you, that's an option. Everything God gives us, the option. He gives us the option. And we have to see things the way God sees things. And the way God sees things and the way God shows us things will sometimes ruffle our feathers, but it's the right thing. We have to have God's perspective. The second thing is this, is that hidden directions require going the extra mile. 
It requires going the extra mile. If you, if you have your Bible, let's go to 16 through 20. It says, dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and 300 men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew their trumpets and smashed their jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. The reason why I, I stop, I'm going to stop here is because Gideon, Gideon had to be creative. Gideon had to, to, it's funny because God takes all of this. They have 300 men, but yet God doesn't tell him exactly what to do. He gives him what he needs, but he doesn't tell him what to do. He leaves the, the rest to Gideon. It's not that God didn't want to get involved. It wasn't that God didn't want to, what, what didn't, you know, you know, you know, you know, I don't, I don't want to, if I don't want to be wrong, so I'll let Gideon be wrong. If Gideon's wrong, he's wrong. No, no, no. No, no, God, God gives him the capacity to decide. See, God has given every single one's wisdom to make the right decision. And we just have to be creative with it. Like I said earlier, this whole thing with the, with the pandemic, we've had to be creative with how we do church. You've had to be creative with how you live your life, how you work, how you operate. You've had to do a lot of different things. But it requires us going the extra mile. And going the extra mile actually means putting some work to it. It's us having to do things that are uncomfortable. It's us doing the extra things to get to where we need to be. If you want to have, you know, a, a great, you know, maybe you're in a place and your company or your boss isn't the greatest person in the world, the extra mile for you looks like, you know what, doing everything you can so that there could be excellence in your job and that God would lift you up in the right time. You want to have great relations. Maybe you haven't had the greatest relationships all the time. It requires you going the extra mile and not only becoming who God's called you to be, but also putting in the work at finding the right people, at being the right person, at making the right decisions. Going the extra mile is us becoming more of who God wants us to be so that God can only, not only be glorified, but that we can be blessed. And find victories in every single thing. Going the extra mile is putting whatever God has placed in our hands to work. That's going the extra mile. Microsoft starting off in a, in a garage with a couple of guys. Facebook starting with a bunch of uh, college guys that didn't even finish at Harvard all of these things started because somebody was willing to go the extra mile, no matter what the situation looked like. It's going the extra mile. It's putting more effort into whatever God has placed in your life, whether it's your family, whether it's your job, whether, whether it's wherever, you know, what, whatever it is, it's going the extra mile and putting work to it. We all use Microsoft at some point but it was because a few guys in a garage made a decision like, hey, let's try this out and try, 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 work, 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 build, 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 build. And now we have like this billionaire man, Apple, things that we like now that we get to enjoy started with somebody in a garage, started with someone having to put the extra work. You want to have a big business music and all these things. It started with someone putting in the work when no one else was there. It's us putting in the work so that we could experience the blessings that God has for us, the good things, because we put effort into it. We sacrificed our 
desires and stuff so that we could have common ground, even if it's inconvenient. It's going, it's, see, here's the thing. God doesn't want, God is not looking for passive people. If love can go the extra mile, so can we. So can we can go the extra mile. And whatever it is that we feel like we're lacking in, God wants us to go the extra mile in it. God wants us to put in the work for it so that it can blossom into something amazing. So that 10 years from now, you can look back and say, God, I thank you that I was faithful to you in during this time. And I, and, I, and I went the extra mile. And now I get to reap the benefits of all of these things. Parents, the reason why you are blessed with the family that you have, it was the work that you put in that now you reap the benefits of having a healthy family, a family that's blessed, a family that's doing things that you would have never imagined. It's because you decided a long time ago to go the extra mile for your family. The last thing is this, I'm talking about hidden options is this, is that your limitations help you find the hidden options. Your limitations help you find the hidden options. We're going to finish the story now in verse 21 and 22. It says, while each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran crying out as they fled. When 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Sheta. I'm say it wrong. To forward Zera, as far as the border of Abel Meloha, near to Bath. The story ends with these. Gideon didn't even have to do anything. The trumpet, the shouting, the trusting, the three hundred men caused these guys to turn on each other, and victory came about that day. From a man that was the weakest in his tribe from the family that was the weakest in their tribe. From having thousands of men to just 300 to now experiencing the victories. Some of us, we, we, get, we get frustrated by our limitations. Maybe your limitation is a budget. It's resources. Maybe you feel like you are the one that is the limited person. You, you blame other people and, and what if you actually embraced your limitation instead of always complaining about it? We put so much energy sometimes in what we don't have or what we lack by, because we either compare it to others or we're just frustrated because we're not seeing anything advance in our lives. And we're, we feel limited. But here's the thing, church. Limitations like, cannot limit you if you do the work. Limitations. Limitations that we feel. You might feel limited, but can I tell you something? The tiny budget, the lack of resources, the things that you don't like, what if all those things that you feel are limiting your life are the things that God wants to use for uncommon ways? What if that was it? What if we stop looking at these things as limitations and actually start looking at them as opportunities? Opportunities. So that God can use it. And God can bless it. The only person that ever stops you is you. No one else has that power unless you give it to them. Unless you allow that voice to dictate. You are your, you have to understand, sometimes we are our worst enemies. It's not always the devil, it's us. I know we want to blame the devil all the time, but sometimes it's us. God wants to do things in uncommon ways for your life. And whatever that looks like, it could be, oh man, just, there's so many lists. And the reason why I want to generalize is because whether you're tuning in or you're in this room, you, you, 
every single one of us, we have different things that we're dealing with, different things that we're trying to overcome. So I don't want to leave it to a certain list and limit it, limit it to that because God wants to work with whoever and whatever. God wants to, to provide in every situation. But we have to understand that those limits allow us to see the options because now we can take a step back and be like, okay, God, this is all I have. But you're telling me I need to do this. So I'm going to trust you with this. And I'm going to work at it. I'm going to go the extra mile. I'm going to see things you do. And then what happens? Expansion happens. Victory happens. Healing happens. Doors open because we decided. Yeah, amen. We decided. Restoration happens in your home. Things change because you decided to use a limitation to man. But God used it as an opportunity. And God expanded it. You trusted him with it. And that's all the story of Gideon was. A limited person in every way, shape, and form. And yet God uses that limited person to lead a nation. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen Lord of the Rings. Anybody seen Lord of the Rings? No? Okay. Well, you can borrow my DVD set. I love Lord of the Rings. But it's funny how the whole story... The only reason why they win in the end is because of one little guy named Frodo, a hobbit. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. A hobbit, somebody that was limited. But yet, the story says that uses this person to bring about a victory for the world. Limited. See, when our limitations come together and they collide with God's expectations, big things have to happen. God's expectations never lower because of your limitations. He will never lower because of your limitation. So I want to pray with you. I want to pray that God would, would bless your home, but that God would also begin to move in your life and begin to reveal to you things that you might have to do to experience the victories you want to see. Decisions you have to make, things that you have to let go of so that God could be glorified, so that things could change for the better, so that you begin to see the hidden options and not think that it's, you know, this or that, that there's another option and there's another option and you know what, it looks like it's just A or B, but God gave me this wisdom and there's actually a C around the corner. There's actually another way I could do this. So let's pray. God, I thank you today. And I thank you for the people that are tuning in online as well. Lord, we thank you that, Father, that you extend a grace that we can never, ever comprehend. God, we thank you that Lord, you have given us a mind. You have given us wisdom. You have given us creativity. And I pray over every single person in this room and that is watching online today that God, that you would give us what we need so that we can experience the victories, the restoration, the healing, the freedom that we can get in you. God, help us to embrace our limitations. Help us to look at our options the way you look at them. God, open up our eyes to see the bigger picture. God, open up our minds. Holy Spirit. Father, bring the right people in our life and help us to make the right decisions of who we allow in our life. But God, we want everything you have to offer. We want the hidden options. And I pray for every single person that you would begin to reveal that. That wherever we go after this, Lord, that we would feel at peace knowing that our futures are in your hands. That our blessings are in your hands. That our next big promotion is in your hand. That our next breakthrough is in your hand, God. That everything is in your hands. And we don't have to be anxious anymore. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were encouraged and challenged through God's word. 
If you've never received Christ as your Savior, today's the day. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, God, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior. If this was your first time. You've made the greatest decision ever. If you're new or you've never been to our church, every single Sunday we have service just for you at 9 a.m. We'll see you there.